Greetings, I'm Rose, welcome to my sewing cave, and welcome back to any returning viewers. In this video, I will walk through all of the fabric patterns and techniques I use to recreate a Pinterest-inspired street-style look. Now, I instead of subjecting my daughter to more filming, I have brought in my mannequin, and I do not have a name for this mannequin, so if you have any ideas for a cute mannequin name, let me know. This is a Dritz um, adjustable that I have just thrown a bra on and padded the bra and kind of padded it to be a little bit more my shape. So it is not my daughter's shape, but it's working for now. So when my daughter told me that she wants to start dressing up for school, so that is instead of wearing pajama pants and hoodies, she wants to wear like real clothes for class. I told her to start a Pinterest board and start pinning looks and outfits um, and clothing that she thought was cool. So she created a Pinterest board and she pinned a lot of outfits that looked like this. So we've got a lot of turtlenecks, we've got some plaid shirts, we've got oversized jackets, and a lot of high-waisted jeans and high-waisted pleated pants. That is not my style. My style is usually kind of more of a vintage look that's 50s, 60s, 70s, some dresses, a lot more girly. So the first thing I thought about making her was the turtleneck. I've had great success with the turtleneck I'm wearing, which is the True Bias Nico top. I made this about two, three months ago and I wear it a lot. It's a great layering piece and it's also super comfortable for the work from home environment we have right now. So. I decided to make the Nico top for my daughter as well, and she went through my stash, and she picked out this. So this is the True Bias Nico top, cut out based on her measurements, and the fabric is a, it's, I think it's either 100% cotton or it's a poly cotton blend out of my stash. There is no spandex, it's a rib knit, it's got good recovery, uh, but not the greatest recovery because there is no spandex, but wash and dry and it just bounces right back. Um, instead of doing the binding, which I probably will do on the next version I make for myself, I just used some bias tape. And so I stitched that on the right side. I folded it under and I cover stitch. I finally used my cover stitch. It looks great. Um, and so I used the cover stitch on the hem and she's been wearing this quite a lot. So I know I'm going to be making her a couple more versions of this. And the next thing I made for her was a plaid shirt. So the pinned outfits that she had sent to me were oversized plaid shirts. And I didn't have that um, oversized button up shirt look and a woman's pattern in my stash, but I did have Simplicity 8753, and it comes with three different styles, the classic, modern, and slim. So I have just used the chest measurement of the pattern corresponding to her full bust measurement, and I used the classic cut because I wanted it to hang over her shoulders a little bit more to give that oversized look. I cut the pocket, the upper collar, and the back yoke on the bias and this fabric is from fabric.com it is a, a robert kaufman mammoth flannel i believe um, so i didn't have a nice beefy flannel in my stash so i had to buy this um, especially for her but i bought it and used it within two weeks so that is a great sewing win for me and if you look here the collar stand i used some fabric from my gunny sack so this is just 100 percent quilting cotton I thought it would give a great feminine detail since everything else about this is kind of oversized and a little bit more masculine. Um, I adjusted the spacing on the buttons um, and this button right here was her full bust and I used my Simflex guide to give equal distance spacing for the remainder of the buttons. And she's been wearing this a lot. It's just a great topper. It gives her an alternative than her hoodies and looks a little bit more put together. And I actually want to make myself one. This is really comfortable. And um, my husband is actually um, wanting one of these as well. So I have a feeling I will be using this pattern quite a bit. So the last thing I made for this outfit was the trousers. And I do not have any, I did not have any high-waisted pleated trouser patterns in my stash, even vintage. Like, 
I don't have a lot of 80s and 90s vintage in my pattern stash. So I went on Etsy and just looked for kind of an 80s, 90s pleated trouser pattern. And I found this, and it's a great option. This is Butterick 6879. And just like the shirt pattern, it comes in three different styles. A wide leg, what do they call it? A narrow tapered or straight leg pants. Um, and we went full narrow tapered pant. Um, so it actually, it turned out pretty close to some of the inspiration images she provided. The pattern came pre-cut and it probably wouldn't be the pattern size I would use for her going forward. But what I did is I just added an inch to the outside seam allowances on both of the legs, giving me an extra four inches of ease. And that was enough to kind of play with the fit of these trousers. So I did make a muslin. And during that muslin, I found out I needed to give her a full butt adjustment. And I had never done one of those before because I haven't sewn trousers before. I've made um, maybe some side zip pants in high school and I've made pajama pants, but that's it. I've never made trousers before. I've never sewn with a fly front. So there was a lot of news here. So I wanted to make that muslin so I could practice all of those techniques. So when I made the muslin, I knew I needed to do the full butt adjustment. And what I did is I had measured or from the top of the pant to where I thought the top of the pant should be. And that was about an inch and a half. So what I did is on my muslin, I made a slit from the, uh, I made a slit on her muslin where the fullest part of her butt was to nothing on the sides. And then I split it in the middle about an inch and a half. And then what I did is I pinned fabric to make up that gap and she tried it on again and it fit really well. I'm not sure if I um, did everything I'm supposed to. I've never done a full butt adjustment, but it works. Um, I also drafted a pocket flap based on the Pinterest image that she had given me. Uh, so I drafted a pattern. I had to tweak it a couple of times, but I think it looks really, really nice. It's just decorative. Um, and I don't have a buttonhole, it's just a button stitching it on place. Um, the fly front went really, really well. I didn't have any issues. I did do a lot of hand basting just to make sure all of the zippers and everything were aligned. But other than that, I had no issues. I think a takeaway would be, um, since I used everything in the stash, like the fabric came from my stash, uh, it's a little bit of like a lighter weight khaki. I don't know if I would use that again but I didn't have an exact match thread in my stash. Believe it or not, I did not have an exact match thread in my stash. So the thread is probably one or two shades lighter than I would have preferred. So the bar tacks I used to support the bottom of the fly kind of show up because they're a little bit lighter, but I think it still looks fine. So there are no rear pockets to this pattern. Um, I think I can use this as a block for her in the future. I could probably turn those darts into a yoke if I wanted to make some mom jeans for her because based on everything that she pinned on her Pinterest board, she would love some mom jeans. Not my style, but that's what she wants. So that's what she's gonna get. We had to buy her the belt. <laughs> she didn't have a belt. Um, this is just completely like 180 from the way that she's been dressing and nothing but like knits and hoodies and um, sweatpants. Um, so I'm excited that she's like, you know, enthusiastic about a closet and she has been wearing this outfit nonstop since I made it. And it's like the best compliment a mom can get when their kid actually wears the mom made clothes. And even my husband says that this looks like a store bought outfit. So there's just wins all around in this outfit. I know I'll be using these patterns again. I like how they turned out. Um, I will probably be making myself a plaited shirt and my husband probably wants one as well. So I may be doing another fabric order <laughs> because of course with the amount of fabric I have, I don't have a nice beefy flannel in my stash. So I'll probably have to put an order in for that. Um, but I'm really glad I found that vintage pleated pattern. Um, what I may do is tweak it again. Some of the images she gave me, there was some extra pleats. Um, some of them were made in like a wool fabric. This is a little bit lighter weight than I would have preferred to use, but she wanted to use it out of the stash and I'm all for it. If she wants to be part of the decision-making process when I'm making her something, I will go for it. Um, she's normally not enthusiastic. The, the things I usually make for her, like her Halloween costumes or, or fleece pajama pants, um, and she wears the pajama pants until they die and the 
Halloween costumes, they only get worn like two or three times and then they go to the costume closet because she outgrows them. If you have any questions about the fabric techniques or patterns I used in today's video, please put them in the comments. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. I hope to see you again soon. Bye.